That Force Radio. That Force Radio is rated M for mature. Or should that be immature? Hey guys, Dustin Wynn. Hey, this is Scott Snyder. This is Paul Dini. And you're listening to Bat Force Radio. And you're listening to Bat Force Radio. You're listening to Bat Force Radio. This is Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman. And you're listening to Bat Force Radio, so stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what's up? I am your host, Everything Batman. As always, we have a co-host, Bat Force Tom. Hey. And today we have a special guest. A lot of people in the comic book community recognize her. And if you don't, you will today. Welcome to the show, Nerdy Girl. Hey, thank you yeah. <laughs> How's it going? Good. How are you guys? Thanks for having me on. No problem. Uh, pretty excited um, to discuss... So much, so much that you do uh, that a lot of us don't know about. Um, I'm gonna just jump right in. Uh, tell us your origin story. What got you to what you do uh, and to where you are today? Um, so I've been in comics for about 16 years, um, and I've been in video games for about three. I came into comics. My boyfriend was doing it when we met, and I was like, "You do what?" You sell comic books. Like, I didn't grow up reading comic books. I played video games, but like comic books weren't my thing. And so it was really weird to me for him to tell me that people are spending like thousands, literally thousands of dollars on books. And I'm like, wait, what? Like people spend money like that? And then I went to my first Comic Con and I was like, this is dope. This is like an underground secret society of people where like you don't know what it is or what it's about until you experience it. And then it's like once you're in and you're accepted in, you're in. And it kind of changed the way I looked at it. It took me a few years before I really got heavy into books. Like I would go and I would help set up at shows and I would get books off the wall. Um, it was a huge barrier for me as a woman to have people want to like negotiate with me. Mm -hmm. It took me going to shows by myself and saying, hey, I'm here, I'm who you get. So deal with me if you want the book or <laughs> go buy another book. I don't yeah. know what to tell you. That's and awesome. That was like this barrier that I broke through. And now I'm I'm really one of the guys. Nice. That's Where awesome. are you based out of? Um, I'm from Western New York. I'm down in Florida, Sarasota area. Nice. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm, in, I'm in Albany. Okay. So I'm yeah. from Rochester. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. What was your first con? San Diego Comic Con. Oh. Go big or go home. Really? Seriously. <laughs> like that's your first Literally con. Literally my life motto. <laughs> that's like, that's like um, of course, uh, you go to that as your first con. It's going to be like, holy crap, this is dope. Because it is. <laughs> there's, right. uh, you know, there's like, we actually there's like ended up doper. buying an Action Comics 1 at that show off of someone's wall. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Damn. <laughs> he was like, in a way, it was like this Australian dealer. Um, he was tucked away in a little corner. No one even knew he was there. And he had this restored Action 1. And we're like, okay, let's buy it. <laughs> that was like 17 years ago? Yeah, 16 years wow. ago, yeah. That's nice. That's awesome. So that was before, like, the entertainment industry kind of got involved in. Oh, my gosh. It. Yeah. it was so much better back then. Like, don't yeah. get me wrong. I understand what the industry has done for the hobby. But from a, like, a comic book background, watching how much the – comic book section shrinks year after year. It's really sad just to watch it kind of dwindle down because that was the lifeblood of these shows. Yeah. Yeah. Is the sellers and yeah, the, 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 uh, the whole like, the um, right. Yeah. You now know, it's it like, was, it got expanded now. It's like, you know, you have people who collect figures, Funkos, uh, you know, people literally go just for, um, the exclusives. Yeah. And, that too. And, so it's like you have to fight through like crowds and like you're like a sardine right on the show floor, especially at the big shows. And I'm very much like a little OCD. I don't like when strangers touch me and like I'm rubbing against all these people. And I'm like, <laughs> I just want to go to my booth. Like, I don't even want to go get food or go to the bathroom, but I have to. <laughs> you just send like SOS flags up. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it's actually insane. I remember um, speaking of which, like when people like you said, how, how crowded it gets because of exclusives. Um, 2019, I went to the McFarlane uh, image booth and he had that, uh, was it the the 500 copies of the, the gold uh, variant of the Spawn 300 and then 1,500 copies of the silver Spawn 300? Uh -huh. And I got one the first day, nice and smooth. The second day, they were like, they didn't say where the, where the, where the line began. And of course now eBay has it for six hundred dollars. So everyone's oh, sure. using their shit. And when the guy was like, "Oh, the line," someone was like, "Oh, the line's over here," and everyone just bum rushed. And like I saw someone like in a wheelchair, just like like fly off the wheelchair. And I'm like, "What oh, the fuck gosh. is going on?" Like, and nothing that important or that serious that you yeah. need to act like some wild animals. Yeah, exactly. And it's like you know you don't have to like push someone out the way like you went to Spotify, right. but that was nuts. Uh, but that's that's what. What, what's going on now and it, it's it's insane um yeah. i wanted to circle back on what you said because you mentioned something that's very rare and uh, a lot of people look at it very differently when it comes to buying mm -hmm. slap books you said that you bought a restored action one yeah so um back like maybe 10 11 12 years ago we did really well in restored books because not a lot of people would take a chance and buy them, but we realized, you know, there's an opportunity here. People are going to get priced out of unrestored books and, or they're not going to want like a one O because I always view it as, and I ask people the question all the time. Sometimes I choose restored. Sometimes I choose unrestored. It depends on the book. Um, but would you rather have like a one O really shitty looking copy <laughs> or would you rather have like a seven O that, looks really nice, but it has some restoration. I don't like trimmed books personally. Um, I try to avoid them unless I'm getting them really, really at a good deal. Yeah. But like most restoration I'll take. And like now there's like this huge thing where people are buying restored books and unrestoring them. And that's like a whole other. Yeah. I've heard of that. Going on right now. Um, and they're doing like crazy things. Don't get me wrong. Like people are going to get money and get the hustle however they can. But sometimes you make the book look so bad removing it. What? Um, all right. So I'm. I like this because you are literally like the Jedi Master to, to this <laughs> new world, and I'm a Padawan learner that I'm very interested in. So can you explain what exactly restored books mean? Yeah. So a restored book is when, um, and there there's different degrees of restoration. There's amateur and there's professional. So like an amateur restoration, if you open up a cover, you can see where like the color touch will bleed through and you'll see it all through the cover. Where like a professionally restored book, you can open it and you can see the line work, but you can scrape that off and it'll make the book look bad, but you're not going to have to put holes in it and take like giant pieces potentially off. And like, so some forms of restoration are pieces added where like if you have a corner missing, they can rebuild that corner and oh, wow. put it back on through rice paper or different kinds of paper. They've come a long way with techniques too. Um, you can seal tears. So tear seals are they take like a little finite amount of glue and just put it back together so that there's not that tear in the page anymore. And then sometimes they'll color touch over it to fill it back in to make it look as original as possible. Mm. Um, They'll reinforce the spine. So like if your cover is split, they'll take rice paper and they'll put it down the spine and then they'll rebuild the spine that way. What the fuck? Um, you can <laughs> it's add like cosmetic staples. surgery. Yep, literally it is. Like, so there's tear seals. People will clean books sometimes. I'm not a fan of cleaning because sometimes it lightens the book and it takes it out of its totally original state. Like at least if there's color touch or tear seals and pieces added. And those are also all forms of restoration that you can take off and remove um, depending on how extensive it is. So there are so many things you can do to make a book look good. I think comic books are one of the only hobbies where restoration is viewed as a negative thing. Mm, like yeah. restoration is considered a good thing. You're bringing it back to its original state and you're making it nice again. And it usually will sell for more. Art you can restore fine art so that it's cleaned up and it's okay. So I think comics are one of the only things I know of where restoration is viewed negatively mm. in terms of value. 
Interesting. You're saying though that there's been like a movement in the last like five years where people are actually interested in it though. Like, yeah, so not, well, yeah. I would say so. I was selling them back even 10 years ago, right? Because, like, if you buy it at the right price, you can sell it at the right price. Mm -hmm. The whole thing is knowing your profit margins. And, you know, I catch flack sometimes for not being a true collector. Um, but I still collect, but this is my job. This is how I make money. This is how I live. So I'm always going to look at things from a business angle first. 100%. And a collector angle second. We're like, can I live without this? If I know I'm never going to replace it, I'm keeping it. Um, so I would say in the last couple years now, I'm starting to see restored books pick back up again. And I think that maybe in the next couple years going forward, we'll see that a little more because books are getting so expensive. Mm -hmm. We're like the entry point to some of these books is already six figures. Holy especially shit. Man, especially if you go back to golden age, like you can't touch an action one for under a couple hundred thousand unrestored. You can't, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. There's so it's few. Okay. That's why like anytime I see a golden age, I'm like, I gotta snag that and just hold on to it because yeah. it's just even rare. Um, I think all I really have, books. what do I have? I only have like the first I appearance of Alfred. What's that? You have the first appearance of what? Uh, Alfred, Alfred Pennyworth. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like especially those great classic covers, they are timeless and you know, Right now in the market, there's a lot of 90s hype and there's a lot of 70s hype. And I think that that's because of the generation of people coming in. Um, Once they realize and they make their money on that and they realize, oh, shit, some of these books are really hard to find going back to like some of the Silver Age, even like the Silver Age DCs and the detectives and Supermans and actions. Yeah. Some of those in nice shape from the 50s and 60s are legit rare and hard to find. So I think once people get bored with finding and buying the same things and selling it, they make this kind of natural transition back through decades as they make more money. Because the other side with golden age is affordability, right? Like you yeah. can't just come in and say, okay, I'm going to go buy a Batman one. Most people <laughs> can't come do that. Mm. I know yeah. I can't. Not yet, at least. <laughs> Not so, yet, right. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I mean, the way I look at it is like stocks, you know, like... Um, you start with maybe a few, you know, that are entry level right. and then you make some profit, you know, you get, you get some money back and then based on what you have and what, whatever you have, like you're willing to part with that yeah. to go and get maybe a few books or maybe one right. that are, that are much pricier. And then you kind of repeat the process in that yeah. sense. Well, and I've like, always, and I've always said um, quality over quantity. You don't um, need to have a hundred $50 books. Go buy a couple really nice books instead. Yeah, 100%. Um, was there a point when, like when you first got into it, you bought that action number one. Uh, was there a, a point when like you noticed like, all right, I'm, I'm buying all the books I want because I want them. Now I got to realize like, if I want to do the business aspect of it, maybe I got to let go of some of the stuff that I love to. That's like to most it. of what it was back then. Most of it was buying just to selling like personal collection was like almost nothing. Like that was unheard of when I went to San Diego for the first time. Like I was pregnant with my daughter who's now 15. Like we were very much in a state of like deal to deal. Like we're going to sell this book so we can pay for this book. And mm -hmm slowly like you start building up enough and you grind enough and you know different collections came in and we would partner with different people who would go out and hunt for books and we would put up the money for them and then split the profits and nice. that's still a business model i follow just because i think that it helps people who are maybe coming in who don't have the money but have the hunger that I don't have as much anymore, yeah. but they're like hungry for those deals and they'll grind and search for them. And I'm like, okay, you go do that and I'll put up the money and then we'll nice. make magic that way. Yeah. Well, you and I got to talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For real. I'm but, always down to split a deal. With um, yeah. some similar to what you're saying, um, you started off with like not collecting for yourself. And it's like, it kind of works out that way. Cause like going back, I don't know, Scarface, never get high if you own supply. Right. You're, you're buying your stuff and you're just flipping. And right. that's when you're making your money. It's, it's tough mm -hmm. to be a collector 
and try to sell at the same time because it's like and oh once the emotional attachment comes in yeah yeah um is there is what is uh what has probably been the most like is there ever been a time when you get a book and you love it and you're like oh my god i love this book and then you're like okay now i gotta make a deal to to move that one and you're like oh no but i really want to keep it though yeah and it sucks <laughs> those decisions you just take a bunch <laughs> of selfies like, with it so you remember it ah what do I do? Do I let this go? How easy yeah. is it going to be to re like a lot of it is how easy is it going to be to replace this? Um, right. Am I okay with the price I'm getting or would I rather go find something else to sell? Because I would rather keep this for that price and sell these things instead for the same price. So it really comes into, especially now, I mean, 16 years later on the mm. comic side, I'm so much more emotionally invested in these books, right? Like I've learned the history of them and I've learned about the artists and the backstories of these characters. And I have covers that I'm really attached to and the historical side of it really draws me in. So yeah. there's this constant tug of war that goes on for sure. The, the amazing thing is, you know, you said you're never really into comics when you grew up, but you got 16 years of being in comics. It's like yeah. that makes up for not, Mm -hmm. growing up you know reading and getting into comics now like you said you're you're emotionally invested with the history of the book the artists um and you you probably know more history of these books than most people who count who are currently reading yeah uh, things now which is which is great kind of like it now it's your life um it truly is i mean i literally live and breathe comics and video games like <laughs> i'm consumed by it <laughs> the life of a 12 year old <laughs> i'm adult ish yeah yeah so when you come across these collections, um, like uh, before when you were hunting, when you were hunting, yeah, how would you come across a collection? And uh, yeah, just like what was like your technique? And you, we're talking about 16 years ago. So it's it's different now. It's, it was so different. Um, a lot of it was meeting people at shows, um, eBay, all the time on eBay, searching for like single listings and like the conversations. Do you have more books for sale? Do you have anything else you want to sell? And it was like opening those doors. There wasn't really Craigslist at the time. I think that came a couple years later for me. Yeah. Um, it was a lot of word of mouth. It was a lot of meeting people at shows and just a lot of networking, honestly. Mm. That's How, what has the internet done? Like what is like social media done to, to change that process? Um, well, it's so readily. So the internet has been a very double-edged sword, honestly, because people are a lot savvier now than they yeah. were. And you definitely work on tighter margins for the most part. Um, Cause like years ago you could get stuff for like half of what it was worth. Now I just did a deal and like, I'm so hungry for books right now because it's so hard that I just did a deal and I'm like, I'll be happy to make 15%. Wow. And maybe I'll get another little spike in the meantime when I'm selling them and maybe I'll make a little more because this market is so volatile. Um, but it was definitely, it's definitely different. And then when we would find deals, um, so I pull out all the best stuff first and that's how you recoup your money so that you're not hungry this whole time and then slowly work through the other stuff that's how's tough. the uh how how do you think like um like the current um the meat like the media like the movies the tv shows like do they play a big role into like the hype and people looking for specific books and you Huge. know like <laughs> i feel yeah. like this whole market is nothing but like speculation now um, mm -hmm. when Marvel got and Disney got Fantastic Four and X-Men back, I mean, I sold a 5.5 five X-Men 1 for 15000 three and a half months ago. Now I know someone just sold a 6.5 for like 34000 Holy shit. And I'm Jesus. like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> like, seriously. And yeah. I do this for a living and... You know, I'm since I'm in other hobbies, I've been watching for the last year. Um, these price increases happen in other hobbies, like baseball cards and sports cards have been going crazy. 
Um, Pokemon is through the roof. Yeah, Video games are on fire. And I kept saying, like, it doesn't make sense. See, no, I ain't messing with it. <laughs> I already have to learn so much. I, people are like, why aren't you buying Pokemon? Because I cannot learn another thing. Right. You have to really invest time to be willing to put in money. Yeah. And yeah. Then and time is money, I, so you're wasting so much time. Right. So, like, I have to sit and, like, study Pokemon, and I didn't even have an attachment to it. I'll go <laughs> buy the games. <laughs> like, yeah. I played with Pogs. I'm still waiting for them to make their comeback. Yo, I oh, can't yeah. wait for them to make a comeback. Okay. I, think, <laughs> um, I don't have a, any of mine left, but I got down on some Pogs. I might yeah. battle Luna. Yes. The tubes. The tubes yeah. with, with the slammers. Yes. I think um two years ago – uh target try to bring them back i remember i went to like the neca section and yeah. i saw a box of like pogs with the tubes and i was yeah, like yeah. no i'm like yo throw batman on one of those and it's a wrap <laughs> it's yeah. true yes My, uh, march it I, the right way so movies have in and now like even the marvel universe i mean star wars look what's going on with star wars and it's just happening across the board right now and sometimes and then the other side of that is all the variants that publishers are doing now mm. and i'm not a fan of it i'm very vocal about that um <laughs> i think that it's like a very and i let me also say, collect what you love. I don't knock what anyone collects, but it's like a manufactured market. Like they're doing yeah. it on purpose. And as long as people keep feeding into that, it's not going to stop. A store owner is going to charge you $3.99 for this book, but they're going to charge 200 for this book because they had to buy 25 copies to get yeah. this one and that's their logic and it's not right to me and this is not a knock to shop owners if you're listening to this i'm not saying shame on you i'm just saying it's a shitty situation mm -hmm. yeah they did that with um what was the big one that like dropped it was like the robin king uh variant cover hmm. the dinosaur or whatever in the front of it i remember it was like 250 200 bucks and then um I, I go on um, key comics and it's like fifty dollars now, and it's like so oh, many no. people got screwed over that. It's like, well, for what? don't stop paying those prices, and they won't be able to do that to you. I tell everyone all the time: if you're going to spend five hundred dollars on a comic book, go buy one that has history and an actual significance in yeah. the comic book realm. Right? Yeah. Like you can get a mini first appearance for that price. Go buy that. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. huge. Five hundred dollars, I could get you. Poison Ivy, right now. Right. Maybe right. four or five. FF uh, 49 in low grade, I think still. So go buy something like that where like you're buying an actual like key issue that's going to hold up over time. It's not going to be hot today. And it's like the flavor of the week. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> every week. Right. Is, Literally uh, every week. <laughs> Keep buying that ice cream. <laughs> are, you, are, you getting, are you getting into like, I mean, I feel like. I don't know anything enough about it, but like are modern books doing anything right now? So I don't personally deal in very much modern. I cut yeah. off in the 90s for the most part, um, unless it's like a Walking Dead one or mm. I think I had an ultimate Fallout 4 that I picked up with someone um, at the right price. Like I'll buy books like that and I will make an exception to that rule. I think ultimate Fallout 4 is a book that over time is going to hold up. It's so important in the universe and what it's done culturally Yeah, that that's a book that long term, that's going to be one that stands out for sure and holds mm -hmm. itself. It got real hot for a while and then it dropped slightly. But um, yeah, I back, think though. exactly what you said. No, exactly what you said. I think yeah. culturally um, that book was, it, it changed everything. Like look at when the movie came out, everyone lost yeah. their mind. So he's important. A, he's a, a popular character that's only been in one movie so far. So yeah. when he comes out again, it's going to be huge. Oh, sky's the limit with that one for sure. Tommy. Is there any books that are? I was going to ask. Is there any books that are like surprising you as far as like, wow, this one's coming out of nowhere and it's just like getting crazy? Giant size X Men one. <laughs> like what? Hulk one eighty one. What? Like I'm sorry. What? When did Hulk one eighty one and nine eight become like a seventy thousand dollar book? What? Like, yeah, what is going what? on? Giant like, size X Men like 6, one. Like Twenty grand. What is going on right now? And you think that's just because they got the license back? 
the movie license? I think it's that. And I think that there's a lot of money coming in right now. I think that people have too much money right now. Stymies, um, man. It, it's that, but it's also the people who used to drop 20 grand on a vacation for their family. <gasps> well, yeah. They're not people who will go out to dinner three, four or five times a week and spend a couple grand a week on eating out. They're not doing that. They're staying home and people are bored. The stock market is crazy. It's very, very high and volatile in my opinion. Yeah. Bitcoin is bananas. I think a lot of people have made money in Bitcoin and they pull that out. They're looking for something tangible to put their money mm -hmm. into. You can buy a comic book, you can buy a video game. And when your friends come over, you can say, Hey, look yeah. at this comic, look at this game I have, or <laughs> look at this comic book I have. And then you start a whole conversation about it. Yeah. It's yeah. my daughter's game. It just happened to be on my desk. She streams here sometimes. That's why I grabbed it. No this. way. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, those are Christmas present, one of them. Um, nice. but I think that people just have a lot of money right now. And I think that for the foreseeable future, it's going to stay. I think that new floors are being set. Obviously, I can't predict the future and I don't know where this market is going. But I know that when books sell over and over and over again at these price points, at least for a certain amount of time, there's new floors that are set where like, yeah, yeah maybe you'll take a little dip, but will you? Nah. You're right, 100%. Um, speaking of which, because we've been sticking to comics for a while, you also mentioned video games for the last three years. Yeah. Like, what got you into video games? Like, what was your first one? And, like, I don't know, just. My first yeah. game I ever bought was A Legend of Zelda. Um, mm -hmm. It was a complete in box, high grade, early, early version copy. And, you know, I had a couple of friends that were pushing me. There was a new uh, grading company that came on scene and they really piqued a lot of people's interest because they ended up getting like an exclusive deal with Heritage to only auction their company's games. Oh, wow. And there was a big sale for Mario Brothers that sold for like a hundred grand and that kind of put eyes on it. And I had a couple of friends that just kept telling me, you just have to dive in. And so when I started buying video games, it was like going back to buying comic books where I'm like, okay, but I'm not going to spend more than a thousand dollars on a game. <laughs> like <laughs> Famous last words. Like, I don't know where and, this market is going. Then. I don't know what's going to happen. And then it was like, oh my God, I had so much fun playing video games when I was younger. I didn't read comic books, but I had a Nintendo. I had a Super Nintendo. I had a Sega. And I got down on some video games and I always equate it to like, um, it's like a marriage and then like a new relationship. And it's like this honeymoon phase, you know, when you like start dating, like when you're married for a long time, like it becomes very, okay, we've done this and a little repetitive and like... Yeah. But like when you have that new relationship, you're like, oh my gosh, this is so exciting. All these new firsts, the first time you get this game in, the first time you get that game in. And to me, it's really special to have these sealed games where like in some of them, the population is 10 known sealed copies or less That's crazy. in some cases. I like, and I would have never thought there was sealed games, period. Because like you buy a game, you open it, you start right. playing. Like, yeah, you're so excited. To open it. Yeah. So I found there was a huge couple of finds um, where people bought out stores. Obviously, oh. stores save stuff. There are like legit old school collectors that were buying games for a long time sealed and had a collection. I met one of my homies and we started trading comic books for video games. I should have wow. got that picture and gave you that picture because there's a picture where we met up in California for the first time after we'd done a couple deals and he traded with me a Batman one. I gave him a Batman one and I got like some really cool games in return. And it was like, well, we're both winning right now. I'm getting games. He's wanting to move into another hobby and he's still involved in comic books. Now he's gone into toys some, but yeah, it was just cool. That's awesome. That's so Christ, awesome. Getting, I'll be back. Getting, we'll buy some like, games. <laughs> I know. There's like comic a shop by me I gotta go to tomorrow. Oh, you should go check games. it out. Because like they got mad games. I walked in one time and I was like, 
it feels like walking into like a you know those old video stores that yeah, like used to rent the games like a time machine and like you're yeah, going yeah, into so mystery. Awesome. Yeah, it's so cool. And then all the systems are there and you're like, oh man, like, like I have an I have like this Nintendo sign behind me. It oh, like so when I plug it in and turn it on, it like lights up and it like sparkles. It's so dope. So like <laughs> yeah. I like buy different signs now and different displays. Yeah. Like it's so and they look so cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. I love like, that uh the I saw you got a, like a 64 in box too. Do you do the systems also? Um, only a little bit in systems. Um, that one's just complete in box. I got it in a deal I did and I kept it because it's so nice. It looks like yeah. brand new. So it's like just like a nice display piece that you got. Yeah. Um oh my god, so many questions. <laughs> Rapid fire. I know. I'll do you, that to do you, you only do sealed games? Mm, mm -mm. I'll do really, really nice high grade complete in box because okay. I think that they will be what um, holds up over time. Yeah, yeah. People like it's like a easier. it's like a comic book, right? Like eventually, there's only so many sealed copies. The demand is overwhelming and growing all the time. And mm -hmm. the cool thing with video games is it's so much more universal, like yeah. worldwide than comic books yeah i feel like people in germany and japan like dubai cool. literally everywhere yeah mm. that's insane i'm like my, my gears are turning right now i'm like damn i gotta find some video games <laughs> right <laughs> i have um yeah it's so funny man it's like you know how we have you have that collector bug and that just inability i mean yeah. i don't have it yet i don't i don't have the ability to let go of certain things like i have in my storage space right now i have my super nintendo i have my 64 and like 15 games per system with controllers. They're all open though. And I don't so play cool. them. You don't but I'm like did, right? Were they yours? I did. Oh yeah. yeah. Like that, yeah. that's what I had as a kid. So that's why I, I can't like let it go. Cause like right. it's I'm your like, childhood. So that, those are mine. Like I had them. But then I'm like, but I could like I could easily sell those to get some money to get like some of the other stuff that I like, you know. Right. Yeah. But it's hard to do that. It's hard to like especially like go ahead. What's your favorite video game of all time? Let me see. Um, well, I'll answer it this way. The one I've spent the most, the probably the most time in yeah. my life playing is Zelda A Link to the Past. That's probably right. the one I put most of my time into. Yeah. And then, like, my favorite to play yeah. was probably, like, that's a good question. I would have probably a, one of the Super Nintendo games. Um, I used to like Top Gear. Zelda Top was Gear. like, though, because... Top Gear is such a I love, game. I like I like I like Zelda yeah. because there was so much time that you can pour into it, and there was still so much. Like yeah. I remember being a little kid playing that game, and it took me probably like three years before I realized like I hadn't even fucking beaten like the main like <laughs> like I didn't even get to like the dark the dark world yet. Like I got into the dark world, and, like this is an entirely different game that I hadn't. Wait, even what is yet. going on right now? <laughs> yeah, so I think that's probably one of my favorites, just because like. I remember being a little kid and playing it and then like finally beating a level that I didn't even know existed and just yeah. like my mind melted. Like I was like, <laughs> I had no idea I hadn't even gotten this far. That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. It's yes. like, is the market the same? Like, um, like depending the systems, like, I don't know, like for me, I love 64 and 64. Yeah. That's like a fucking gem. Uh, you know, when you talk about like, uh, golden eye and like, <gasps> Oh, duh. Mario yeah. Kart and all that I stuff. Am. Like, for me, that's like oh, all right. Mario Kart's my shit. Yeah, I don't think that's that's really hard to top when it comes to any yeah. gaming system. But like, I which used to one? Love PlayStation. Like, which I'll Mario Kart is? Which Mario Kart's your favorite? Oh, my favorite. Yeah. You know, I gotta stick with the OG Super Nintendo. Yes. But I'm not gonna lie, I just got a Switch. Finally, I came into the 21st century. Oh man! And my daughter. <laughs> I literally the other night spent like four and a half hours playing Mario Kart. Beating each other's ass. I was like, oh my God, I need to go to bed. It's so far past my bedtime. Yeah. How that old game is so universal. She's 15. Oh shit. So you guys are like perfect. Yeah. Like, she, and, like it's oh, legit she competition. Just, she talks as much shit as I do. And she's better at video games than me. Oh man. I suck at video games. I, I make no qualms about it. I'm very bad at the controllers and I tried to play Fortnite once, and nah, all I did was fell down 
I didn't know where I fell. I spun. <laughs> I shot the sky a couple times, and then I got shot in 57th place, and that's all I did. Oh, my God. Yeah, Never. I haven't, I haven't even I, tried Fortnite. Not trying it. Um, I do love the first the first Halo on Xbox because oh, shit. that was when my brother – that was the moment when my brother – was good enough to beat me at video games. Oh, that's great. So, like, so it's like a real competition that right. Like, like my little yeah. brother was beating my ass. I'm like, this motherfucker, like You're right. It makes you hungry for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. Yeah, yeah. those are yeah, I, those games, man. I remember in college we had an N64. And oh. uh it was just a 30 pack, some weed, right. and fucking right. Mario Kart. Right. all right. Saturday. Oh, it was like no sleep. Right. How'd you spend your weekend? Oh, you know, gaming out. Yeah, just yeah. Fucking, just <laughs> launching turtles at each other. Yeah. My, um, yeah. my junior year of college, uh, I took my my Super Nintendo back to school with me, and I was an RA. And so, like, I so every like every other Friday or Saturday, I had to be on duty, like in my dorm, like making sure yeah. no one's burning the place down. So yeah, like I would I would smoke weed, and then right. I, would, right. I would just play like Donkey no, Kong. No. Out <laughs> Mario World and just like I'm just chilling yes, in my dorm Mario room. Like, so good. Yes. Oh, you just said it. Donkey Kong. That game was spectacular. Oh my god, Donkey Kong is the shit. I actually bought the new one for the Switch, but I didn't play it yet. Oh my god. Donkey Kong Country. I'm about to buy one now. Oh, the Switch? Switch? Wait, get a you don't have a Switch? No, I have my PS4. I don't I don't no. game much. I don't, I don't know. You need to get the switch. That thing is so good. Yeah. And if you travel, you can take it with you. True. That's okay. a rabbit hole that I'm scared of. The first year that switches came out, that right. fall, I think it was a full year it was out. And then I got one and I started playing it and I noticed what it was going to do to me as far right. as. <laughs> like, I'm like, I, I had a life. Now I don't. <laughs> I can keep this thing. And if I keep this thing, this is all I'm going to want to do every night, right? And yes. I think I had just had my my kid, so I'm like, I can't do this because like I'm literally going to be a bad father. So, <laughs> like, You're the best I, father ever, teaching him to grow up on gaming. I'm just true. saying. Do yeah, you see what I, these streamers are making? It's, yeah, it's pretty. Yo, crazy. yo, More than it's us. unbelievable. <laughs> I'm about like, to be a streamer. <laughs> yeah, why not? Like, I was um, I used right. to play, I used to play Madden on PC when I was in high school. Yeah. And my like, I think it was Madden '99, and I think the team to pick at that time was like the the Rams, and it was like Kurt Warner and whatever. And I play against people online. This is before online gaming went to console, and I was right. like, on PC hard, like no sleep. And this was like I didn't even have a controller. It was straight up clicking with arrows and hitting like Z and A. And man, I used to bust some ass. And yes. My mom used to yell at me. <laughs> and then she's like, "You got to stop playing that. You're not gonna do anything with your life." And I'm like, "Mom, look at these kids now." Look, they're, if she only right, they're filling up stadiums like gaming at yeah. eighteen million. Literally, yes. Like, are you kidding me? My mansions in, in Austin, Texas. Yeah, mom, you fucked like, up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Look what I could have done. I, I really hope she doesn't see this when I post it on Facebook. She's like, "Oh, I fu- oh, you, I fucked up, huh?" Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna show her. I'm not gonna tag you in. <laughs> Oh man, but that's awesome getting into gaming. Like we could talk about gaming all day. Like literally, like no joke. I think that that's because I have like such a personal attachment to it. Yeah, I think um, I you know you it's hard to think of anyone who didn't have like a gaming system growing up, right? And if you didn't have one, you go to your friend's house. Like you play right. Sonic was another one. Oh my gosh. Yeah, there's like Sonic. I remember like because it's Sega. I was playing Double Dragon. Um, oh yeah, like they had Ninja Turtles, um, even Pac Man. Like Pac Man was on Sega, and it was like I spent hours playing Pac Man, and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, it's fucking Pac Man. It's on a phone now." Yeah. You know, so we, have like, uh, we have like a flat top arcade table in our house, like the bar cocktail table, and we'll nice. still on Pac Man on that Galaga. Yeah. yeah, like when it comes to gaming, like you said, like it's it's yeah. it's uh, it's timeless and. It's Literally. something our parents get involved, although my parents suck playing Mario with me when I was a kid. I was the only child that tried so hard to have them play with me. And I was yeah. like, all right, guys, I can play on my own. I don't need you. My but, daughter's an only child, and I try my best. Love. <laughs> all we can do. Stop, Mom. Now um, she just beats me and shit talks me. 
All right, so at least you know, at least she's doing that. <laughs> but that's that's the that's the great thing about gaming and like comics yeah. and stuff that we collect that it's like it, it brings it brings generations together. Right. Um, one of the things I wanted to bring up, uh, so you had this lovely article by with sci-fi wire. How did that oh, happen? Man. Oh my gosh, you so I did not know that that's what was gonna happen. <laughs> so I I did not know that he wrote for sci-fi. Um, oh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> snuck, yeah. Snuck it in there. All of a sudden, I started getting like random follows, and I had a friend send me this article, and they're like, "Hey, great article!" And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" And I have a friend that I met through um, mutual friends down here in Florida, and he does art and he does comic books. And Mike Avila, who did the article on me, is friends with my friend Mark. And he's the one who introduced us. You know, I met Mike at a show once and we went back and forth a couple of times. And he's like, you know, I'd really like to do an interview with you. And I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'll do interviews and YouTubes and streams from time to time. And I had no idea when he was writing this article, the angle he was going to take and the way he was going to tell my story and that it was going to end up on sci-fi is the head article. That is huge. And it was like, holy shit. I can't believe that this just happened. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. I remember you. uh you share, I think you shared it on your story. Yeah. And I was like, oh shit. And I read it. I'm like, That's so dope. And I was just thinking, like, uh, I was just thinking the idea of having this podcast. Yeah. And I was like, I need to get her on eventually. And it was like, hmm. Yeah. And now yeah. well, here you are. <laughs> yeah, Dunk, uh, he was he was showing us like your page on Instagram. And I remember like looking at it. And I'm like, no, we have to fucking get her on. Like, that is so sick. <laughs> like, that, like, I remember thinking like, yeah, dude, that's like, that's a whole nother world that like you get to learn about. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, we, we collect comics, but we don't like collect graded books. Or right. Yeah. Fucking, yeah, yeah. Like, all that shit. So, but you know, now that we've talked to you, it's like, you know, like look at the look at our background, right? Like we have so much <laughs> shit, and it's like That's what it. I started doing over over the last like like couple of years. Um, I started realizing like I like all this stuff, but I don't like all of it as much as I love some of it. Right. And so I started like fine, like really kind of fine tuning like the stuff that yeah. I like to collect. So like I used to get like everything that's Batman, everything. And then oh. I realized, like, okay, well, what's my connection to it? Why do I like I it? And I realized this. it was yeah. the 89 movie and the Returns movie, right? So I'm like, that's what I love. So that's yeah. what I'm going to focus on. You have to, like, hone it's in it's on it. that. Yeah. yeah. So since yeah. I started doing that, like, most of my collection is mainly, like, the Michael Keaton, Tim Burton stuff. And I just, like, like all my art, for the most part, is that, yeah. like, the art on the walls. Like, the books are different, obviously, because the comics, okay. like, it's, it's all over the place. But... Like any of the figure, and it makes it easier to do it that way. Oh, it for makes sure. it easier to like collect, but but yeah, so it's You're like more um, limited, right? You don't feel like you need to go get everything. It's and so it goes, much better. It goes for me back to quality over quantity. Yeah. 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 I'm just yeah, so, I, go ahead. I was gonna say, like, is there um is there like uh characters that you just can't stop buying because like you're always you're always going to collect this character. It doesn't matter how popular they are. So I love Cap, obviously. Um, I love Golden Age Cap, especially just because there's so much history tied to him. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if a lot of people realize this, but Captain America is punching Hitler on the face, in the face on the cover. But it was before that cover came out. Before we went into World War II and we went into the war. And it was like this premonition and it was them telling people, you know, we're going to go to war. Yeah, <laughs> we're about crazy. to fight Germany mm. and we're about to go after Hitler. And it's just this deep, rich history that started all of these different covers from the 40s. And, you know, they span from Timely to DC. Um, I definitely think that Timely crush the covers so much more than DC. There's so many gritty, just war, nasty bondage, just oh, so good, but so filthy at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> the art is just 
it's untouchable today, right? Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong. McFarlane has done some really epic shit. And I actually like Scott Williams and Jim Lee mashed up. They've done some really great covers, but there's nothing is filthy and is good and is history laden as those early forties covers for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot yeah, of history, sure. a lot of history in those covers, especially like looking back and seeing what those covers meant to people. Um, before and we get know, into our, oh, ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was going to say, you know, I'm much more attached. I also collect artwork, like original art. Um, nice. And I'm much, much more attached to art than anything because art, I can never replace it. There's one. Mm -hmm. Like, So you don't sell your art that you receive or you, you or is it, <laughs> if you get it? Because you can't keep, keep everything. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I definitely have pieces where I'm like, it's going to take like a real fuck you offer to sell this. Mm. Awesome. Um, before we get into our, our photos that you sent us, uh, of course, like the million dollar question when it comes to selling comics or getting them slabbed, who do you prefer? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this question. Um, There's me, different reasons to go either I, way, but like. So I respect both companies. Um, Steve Borak, who's the head grader over at CBCS, is a longtime personal friend. Um, I primarily use CGC when they're like within a half hour of my house. Um, no way. Really easy to drop off and pick up. Nice. Is That's far. awesome. Um, so I don't have to worry about damage in the mail. And to me, like some of the books I'm submitting are really expensive. And I always get stressed about that because I've had books damaged in the mail before. Oh, no. Um, but it can happen. So for me, it's a lot easier to just drop off and pick up through CGC. Yeah. And I like their labels. Yeah. yeah. I've, um, I'm labels kinda, are very clean. I, I want like uh, I want them to start having DC labels, but I think it's a licensing issue. And like I have oh, all the great Marvel ones, they're so cool. And I'm like, damn it, I just want a Batman one or one Harley, at least that. But um, oh, Harley would be dope, yeah. Yeah, or Joker. I don't know. This, yeah. um, but yeah, I, I think you know, I think it's crazy how like one's valued more than the other, but like technically they're exactly the same. Um, um from, yeah. from, from I what I like, see, not dived in like yet. Another conversation for yeah. another day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know there's like there's a lot of like back and forth in, in the in the community, but I yeah. just had to throw it in there. But living half an hour away, if I was right. half an hour away, you, you know what? Most of most of my books would be slabbed right now. Right. Um, but let's go jump into some nice uh some pictures okay. there. Let's start with the video games. Oh my God, this is oh, so By sick. the way, so hang on. I also want to point out, I know it's all about the games, but that artwork over it is an LB Cole commission from um, an original art collection we got years ago when it was one of my favorite pieces in it. It's likely one I'll never sell. Mm -hmm. um, and I have the letter somewhere buried away still where he explains his whole thought process when he did that commission. Oh, wow. That's sick. Yeah. You don't really get that with a commission. Yeah. He like mailed it back. The guy who had all this art was like a huge comic fandom person. Just amazing. Yeah. Thousands of pages of artwork. So these so, games right here. Go ahead. So these are a lot of my Zeldas. Um, and then Mortal Kombat, obviously, you can't go wrong with. Yeah. Smash Bros, one of the greatest games. Smash Bros. Um, and then that is one of my Mario brothers there. You so Mortal is, Kombat. Is, oh, you see Zelda? Sonic back there, too. <laughs> yeah. What is like a, a, I think it's like I see a 9.4 Zelda Link to the Past Super Nintendo. What does that go for? Like 20000 Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't ready for that answer. <laughs> Jesus. I guess it's because no one fucking keeps those sealed, right? Yeah. Like, I would. Yeah. Like, no one. I. You don't think about, like, just keeping video games it, sealed. It's, it's just all not. relative. And it's all about scarcity and supply and demand at the end of the day, right? Like, there's another link to the past on the other side. Um, that Zelda that's a 75 that you see on the right of the Smash Bros is, it's the second release of Zelda. There's only maybe 
two known first prints and there's less than 10 second versions. Um, so I'm really, really happy to have that game because it's really the earliest version anyone can really get because the other copies are tucked away in collections that will likely never be sold. So you have like one of 10 of those? Yeah. Holy uh -huh. shit. Jesus. I have That's a couple insane. games that are like one of like five. Wow. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's in, that's insanely impressive. Here's a nice sick ass wall. Oh Here's my Mario. So that sign that you see with Yoshi, the Super Mario World sign, it's really hard to find ones with stickers on them. So the stickers are in like the yellow bubble behind Mario and in front of Yoshi. Mm. And most um most signs like that don't have the stickers on them. So that's really cool. That's dope. And, and that's so, like a custom um, Nintendo cabinet. This looks like this looks like Toys R Us on a Saturday morning behind the gate. And like I just got my ticket from the aisle. So now I my dad bought me the game. So now we're walking <laughs> Yeah, we're walking up to the gate now. So the dude's gonna go and pull the game after I give him the yes. ticket. That's what that looks like. I, I'm I'm <laughs> speechless over here. Like wow. Damn. Well, so what is the Super Mario? What is a um what is a Nintendo Super Mario? Right there, like you got one, two, three, four, five, six, six that I can see, but I'm sure there's doubles behind it. The Super Mario it? World. So yeah. there's different versions there. Um, ovals, you can get like I have a six O that's like mm, ten thousand. Um, oh and higher grade copies can go. I mean, there's a hang tab on Heritage right now at auction. That's a very early version, and it's high. It's a nine six. And already it's at like three hundred sixty thousand. Oh my god! Yeah, I wish so, that faces were showing when we were talking about this because that would make it epic. <laughs> it's pretty epic. I mean, it's, it's plenty epic. What kind of um, what kind of security system do you have at your house? Um, so I keep a lot of some stuff I don't keep at my house. I put it together, do photos and that's it. Um, okay. we're armed and we have a crazy alarm system. Yeah. I was going to say like, I think you kind of have to, <laughs> you have to keep yourself protected, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right, let's, let's do some of these bad boys. Now this, I, I think this is the first picture I saw and I was like, Oh my God. So I still have that detective 27. That's my personal copy. Yes. I still have that 38. Um, I don't have the 34, 35, or 36 anymore. I sold those, but those yeah, are well, great yeah. Batman covers. I mean, that yeah. high and needle cover is just so good. Look how clean they look! Like, it's they obviously look amazing. Tech 27, if you don't know, is origin first appearance of Batman, um, first Robin. Just the classic hypodermic and then oh, so much goodness there. Well, thank God you kept those two because wow. Priorities. Yeah, those right. are hard to come by. Have you have you ever came across another Tech 27 or? Um, I've owned, huh, I would say probably between eight and 12 copies over Holy the years. Shit. Yeah. Not not at the same time. Not at the same time. The most I had at once was I think two or three. Oh my god. And you just kept the highest grade, right? For unrestored. Or like... I got the unrestored copy. Oh, nice. That's an unrestored 5-0? Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. Blue label. <laughs> Dude, look at how fucking so a restored a restored copy would have a purple label. Okay, thank you. See, you're you're taking you're welcome. It. I'm, I'm getting you're schooled right now. Yeah. Well, yeah. Here to learn. Let's mm -hmm. look at this. Oh my goodness. I still have a bunch of Hulk ones. I had like a whole short box with like 150 copies from a wow. collection probably 10 years ago. And they were just what? sitting in a box and all of a sudden pulled them out, started grading them. Um and you personally the, found that? Yeah, yeah. It was someone we met um, at a convention and ended up driving out to his house. That's where we got a lot of the X-Men ones from, the 90s version. I think we had like three long boxes of X-Men one. How did how did that guy get so many? Did he don't own a shop or something? I think he had a shop and he just bought a lot. Like uh. in the 90s, you could get that so easily. 
Mm. That's my personal journey 83, the 90. That's my personal copy. Um, that's my favorite Silver Age book. Just such a great cover. Thor's such a badass character. Yeah. Hell yeah. Wow. Um, Obviously. Like ah, so this is a collection that was a decade in the making. Um, literally 10 years ago, maybe more, this guy sent an email saying, hey, I have an action one. Um, would you be interested? And, you know, you get emails like that all the time where you don't know if they're blowing smoke. It could be like a reprint and people don't know. Um, or maybe they just say they have it, but they don't. And so a couple years after, so literally once a year, we and this guy would check back in with each other and just say, hey, how are you? How's it going? Um, so I'll have the action one. And he finally sent pictures one time. And it's like, oh, my gosh, this is real. And it was his stepfather's. And he's like, he doesn't want to sell yet. But when he does, I'll let you know. And finally, a couple years ago, um, he emailed and he's like, okay, it's time. He's ready to sell. We didn't know at the time that there were eight other brothers involved in this. And they're like, well, we don't want to sell to only one person. We want to get other offers. And we ended up in this crazy bidding war. <laughs> Obviously, I don't lose. Um, <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Like, I only play to win, just saying. And it was a full run of action, one to 400. There were like 500 other books with it. And yeah, I ended up Jesus. selling that action one to pick up um, the copy we have now. Oh my God. Nice. Yeah. So, so what's, what's like the, every, go ahead. Well, what's the grade you have now? Um, it's a three, five. Woo-wee. Unrestored. Amazing. Ugh. Okay. Hey, I want to go back to this because uh, we skipped over some of the books that we were talking about. Well, but... X-Men 4, First Omega Red, that book's on fire. Uh, Wolverine limited series. Um, Obviously, that just needs no explanation. Um, I have a yeah. set of Wolverine claws that I can't decide if I want to frame a Hulk in 81 with them. They're from X-Men 2. Or if I want to put them in with a Wolverine 1. Wolverine one's probably more practical. <laughs> mm. That's the, uh, is that the Frank Miller run? Yeah. Yeah, it's a beauty. Goodness gracious. Um I wasn't I wasn't prepared for this episode, Dunk. Yeah, like, was I, 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 I keep getting, <laughs> I I keep get getting my breath water. taken away. I know, bro. <laughs> All right, let's uh let's try to keep going before I faint. <laughs> 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 ah, this is another one of my favorite books. So I was wearing Marvel with Marvel One. Um, truly the book that started timely. First timely ever. Um, ridiculously rare. And yeah, that's personal copy. That one's not going anywhere. I turned down really high offers for that book. Nice. So people know that you have it and they want it, huh? Yep. It's so hard to find. Um, there's less Marvel ones than there are action ones. Wow. Mm. That we know about. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, maybe there will be a few. Oh, that's like a picture of my inventory. I think this is the weakest inventory I've had in as long as I can remember. Just because buying games and really the last year, I have to say, like, from a uh, business side has been probably the greatest year our business has ever had. Um, it's been so hard mentally, but on a business side, incredible. I can't keep books in. Yeah, did I like that? Uh, the Batman one skyrocketed. That's a 4 That's like, what, 200 Almost, yeah. Yeah. And then you got the 7-5 Mr. Freeze. Mm -hmm. That skyrocketed even higher than it was a year ago. I actually sold that one since that photo. Oh, man. Mm -hmm. And then you got a, rest a restored uh, Amazing Spider-Man. Yeah. Oh, and man. Fighty 1, Avengers 1. Yeah. Unreal. Asian 1. <laughs> 
So is that like? Oh, oh, I'm back. sorry. More sorry. games. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. So it's like when you when you display on on cons, is like kind of like somewhat one of your walls or? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And you know, some shows I'll only do one wall. Um, for me, it's not. It's too much to keep track of to have like a giant setup. Um, my yeah. booths are not very big. I have a, I mean, I was talking about this the other day. I am a hot mess when I'm traveling for conventions because I have my, I have like a plastic wombat rack that I can build up and that's over one shoulder. I have my backpack on one shoulder. I have a box with a wheeling a metal rack that I'm carrying another box on plus my two suitcases. It's, it's a hot mess watching me go through an airport. <laughs> More game walls. Oh, man. Oh, this is such a great picture. These are some amazing games. So Donkey Kong, Duck Hunt. I feel like you can't have a Mario without a Duck Hunt. That game was the shit. Um, Double Dragon 3? Double Dragon 1, 2, and 3. Um, <laughs> The purple row are all the Disney Capcoms and like a couple of the other purple box Capcoms. My personal goal is to get all of the Disney Capcoms sealed. God, that's so sick. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I got no words. I'm like, <laughs> I, I want to I wanna crack them all open and play, but I defeat the purpose. No. I'll cut you. <laughs> Look. I'll cut you. <laughs> It's like uh, it's like worth it. Just cut me. <laughs> and then, uh, it's just amazing that they're still packaged, and it's like yeah, wow. it's like looking in a museum. Like you're like you're looking into a museum. Yeah, you start charging admission. Yeah, you should. Like that one dude who has like the he supposedly has I forget where he's from, but he's got like the first like five years of like I forget which basically DC and anyways. Um, this looks like it's kind of what your setup would look like at a con. That is, but that's a claim sale I did on Instagram. Oh, okay, cool. Mm -hmm. so this is how you had to set this up. And that's house. my. This is my. This is what I bring to shows, and this is my rack I use when I set up for claim sales. Yeah, first Harley, okay. first Wolverine. Oh my God, Court of Owls. What's that? What's that first Harley at right now, or at least right there in this picture? That's a nine eight. Um, yeah, I think I sold Sheesh. that for thirty three hundred. Holy shit! That thing yeah. has jumped so high. If they that look. has it really is. jumped a lot. I agree. I have a nine two, and like I got it for like four hundred bucks, and I'm like, I'm holding on to this shit to the day. I oh, nice. and then the other thing that's really jumped too are newsstands versus directs. Yes, newsstands. Yeah. Anytime I see a newsstand like of of, of a key, I'm like, oh, I'll just snag yep. this. Yep. It's I got crazy. You. I got you, Tom. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I was like, what the fuck are they talking about? Here we go. All right. Oh, yeah. like, sorry, I was like all up in it. I know. So <laughs> I. The difference in newsstand and direct is in the bottom left corner, there's either the face or a barcode. And the barcodes are harder to find on some books. Um, you see in the bottom left how a lot of them are have the little icons. Got it. Like, so the newsstand yeah. will have a barcode instead. Is the difference? Yeah, it's like I don't know. Which the uh, which the uh, uh, more rare? The newsstand sell for more. Really, with the barcode? Yeah. Yep, the barcodes mm. too. I'm like okay. horrible example, but like I got a Batman 700. It's so like the barcode, but like you don't um you can't tell the difference. Like oh, right. okay. And then sometimes you see something like this instead. Yep, there you go. And that's the direct. Yep. I kind of like the direct better with all the faces and all that stuff, but you know. But well, your wallet is like the other one. Right. That's why the newsstands um, are more now. Mm. Interesting. That's insane. Wow, man. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> holy cow. Like, I'm just like, um, <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. I'm like, Florida. All these collections, Scarface. I don't know. I'm just thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Go find some shit. I got you. So is this the most fun job you've ever had? 
Yeah, you know, it's also very stressful, right? Um, it's a very double-edged sword. I literally put a post on my Facebook this morning and I was like, I think one of the biggest struggles of being self-employed is people feel like you always have to be on. Yeah. And there's no downtime. You're always expected to answer to send photos right away. And we live in a very oh, yeah. gratification society. Yeah. Yeah. I've, yeah. I have a, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, I have a, I have a close friend. Well, someone I met when I moved to, when I moved to Albany, um, mm -hmm. my buddy, John, uh, East Greenbush comics. He, um, one of, one of, one of the people I met coming up here and him and I just became really close friends. And I feel like, He's like that in a sense because it's like, you know, he gets a text message and is like, hey, what do you have this week? Anything new? Um, anything to pick up? And it's like, and you feel like you have to answer because yeah, people know right you away. have your phone. This is your job. It's almost like an expectation. Yeah. And, you know, I can't tell you the last time we took like an actual vacation that wasn't centered around a convention where it's like, yeah, I'll go out to dinner and do drinks at night. But, yeah. To like completely detach and step away for a few days, I can't tell you. That's tough. Yeah, is it Facebook uh, that shows like if you are um, like if you're doing like a merchant like profile or something, it says like average response time. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It does. That's insane. Yeah, I don't like, do a lot on Facebook. I do a lot just because I find the Facebook groups also to be a little um, snooty or a little toxic. Oh yeah. yeah. And yeah, very yeah. negative and drama. And I'm like, these guys have more drama than my teenager. Yeah. For yeah, real. We, uh, we, we uh, are, uh, you know, we were in a couple of like action figure groups and stuff. And like, there's been, we, we, we make jokes about the, the toy wars of 2015. <laughs> we're like, group, they like, they'll group up as like a banner of like a click and they'll call themselves yeah. a certain name and they'll beef it with like other dudes that are of a different oh, like, West Side Story, meet me on the yeah. corner, bring your figures. Right. It's like so funny. Yeah. It's hilarious. And it's and, like, and you know, and people are mean sometimes. And I don't think people realize, like I get a lot of hate thrown at me um, because I don't read comic books because I'm a girl and you know, they're like, you're not a real collector. And sometimes people will throw some like real shade. And I'm like, guys, like, you know, I can read this stuff. Yeah, and you know yeah. I'm a human, right? Like we know I'm alpha female. I have crazy <laughs> RBF. I can handle my own and I'll talk back. But y'all, so yeah, Instagram yeah. is just, I love the IG comic fam. They have really took me through this without conventions this past year. That has been my lifeblood to connecting with people. Yeah, it's been cool to see, like, I, I, I saw that I think everyone to survive, they had to kind of go the, like, the live auction route and, um, you know, or, or at least claim sale stuff, stuff yeah. like that. And I, I remember thinking, like, that's so smart, like, to do because, you know, like, you have the stuff, you don't need a convention necessarily no, to move. No, overhead, to hell no. Yeah. I said yeah. that, I'm like, and, and you know what, I also think is that's going to be something that stays because I mm -hmm. think people have grown accustomed to it. I think people like that. I think that as much as people love going to shows and they'll still go to shows, there's something really cool about being able to sit down on a Friday night or Saturday afternoon and jump on and interact with other people in the community. Cause like, you'll see it in the comments, right? You'll see other people and they see their friends and they'll talk back and forth too while they're talking with you and it's just such great vibes yeah, that yeah. It still lets them kind of go to a convention or like a sale together, even if they can't go to the same convention. Yeah. Yeah. 100%. And you know, if you're dealing in graded comics, like you don't need to physically be there to, right. it's got the grade on it. And so right. if it's a respected dealer, like, you know, you're getting the yeah. exact book that you yeah. want, you know? Right. So it's just kind of, it, it kind of worked out to, I think a lot of people's favor, luckily. Yeah. So um uh going back to the newsstand and thing i just i was like wait a minute i have a perfect example so i got deathstroke's first appearance and Ooh. it's like here's a newsstand see yeah 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 yeah. and then oh, oh we got see, two. there you go that's a great side by side yeah so i just wanted so to show anyone out there so this one would be 
harder to find, more expensive because it's a newsstand. Mm -hmm. And this one, it's not a couple, maybe maybe a couple of hundred bucks, depending on on the grade. But uh, the difference, yeah, the difference is a couple hundred bucks. Depending once on you the get grade. once you get to like more rare say, books, I'm sure. I will say the higher the grade, the bigger that difference is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was like, wait a minute, I have a perfect example. It's right here. Yeah, I gotta send it to CDC. That was a great now, see, right. me, like me as a guy who like, yes, I do and like if, if I were to get into this game, I'm gonna be honest with you, most of it's gonna be because I wanna keep the stuff and I wanna collect right. it, right? So me personally, like my preference, I would like the the non newsstand edition because I fucking like the little logos and I like the it's like a bonus little piece of art, yeah. you know? So <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, I mean, but I don't live in that world, so I, you know, luckily I don't have to make those decisions. So right. I'm like, I'm slowly getting yeah. into it, which is scary, but it's like, you know, um, it's also hey really exciting and fun. It is like, I yeah, just you said, know, go ahead. I was gonna say, like, um, back when I graduated from college, you know, I came home and I had, I got a job, like a, a real job, and I was making a little bit of money. And at the time, like, I love music, so. I was collecting records and I was collecting like just, you know, my favorite bands. Right. And then over time it just got too big. I have my collection yeah. was way too big and I didn't have the time to listen to all these things. So I got together a bunch of stuff that I, that I was going to sell and I took it someplace to sell it and I got way more money than I thought I would. And I realized cause the stuff okay. I had, was, yeah, it was yeah. like the stuff, the stuff I had, I didn't know, but I was just getting what I wanted to listen to. Like, right. I was like, what's the, what's like original label, you know, original label stuff. I, I want to hear what it sounded like to listen to yeah. stuff from the 60s and 70s. Oh, and so I was good. smart. I was smart to do that in that, like, yeah. the resale retains really well. And so now, you know, I, I kept doing it. But I'm looking over here at my record collection. I just sold, like, maybe, like, 300 records, like, a month ago. And oh, wow. I took it. I took it to a place, shout out to a glass house record store in Pomona, but Alex, the guy that runs it, he actually runs the Coachella record store. So uh, oh, every year, cool. every year at Coachella, he puts out an outdoor record store mm -hmm. where like it, yeah. it's a place to go. He, he tries to get yeah. all the best records from the country. So I sold him half of my collection and nobody else will ever touch, touch like how well this guy yeah. sell, buys for Like he, I, I remember like, getting the money and being like, dude, I could do, I can invest in this. Like I, right. I need to invest in something. Right. So now I'm talking to you and I'm like looking at all my records that I don't listen to. I have so many still. And yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm like, all right, why don't I, why don't I go sell a couple of these to Alex and then like start looking right. at some first appearance villain books. Like, yes. like why not? I got the so spinner about, rack right behind me right, for it. Truly. I'm all about work smarter, not harder. Yeah. I work so hard. And now I'm always, I'll work smarter, not harder. Like I would yeah. much rather buy one book for a thousand and sell it for 1500 than have to just for an example, then work and have to sell 25 or 30 books to make the same amount. I have to yeah. do so much more shipping that way. So much more listing. Yeah. That's and it's fine. like, uh, you know, uh, I just don't have the space for everything that I want to collect. Right. It's just not there. But comics, like I, the fact, like, look at the spinner rack. Like, all I need is yes. you have some display for the covers, and that's that's legit. You know. Exactly. Um, let Let me ask you a question. Since we have you, and uh, let's say a, a gentleman of my stature, right, um, never dove into this world before. I am very interested. And I'll probably start with like what I like first, right? Of like, course. let's say yeah. I want to do like my favorite villains. So like. What I, I didn't even know, like, what's like a first appearance like Clayface go for? Oh. Like, do you know? Or maybe it's easier. What's like, I mean, we were just talking about the freeze. You got a freeze, oh, right? Yeah. Well, I sold my freeze for um, $8,500. Um, okay. So I'm not going to go into that one. But, but <laughs> I will start. also say in like seven five, that's considered. So in DC from like the 50s, like a seven five is considered high grade. So you can okay. get like a 3.0 or a 4.0 for 1,500, a thousand bucks or something. Much more like, doable. And that, in that price range is smart, right? I yeah. wish I had more thousand dollar books and $500 books because people will come and drop 500 bucks and they won't think about it. That's yeah. not it for something that I, for, for someone who's collecting comics, they'll save and that's not like, I can't eat if I buy this book money at 10,000. It's like, well, shit, do I buy a car 
or do I buy a comic book? Or at 50,000, do I stay renting my apartment or do I put a down payment on a house? Right. So in that like 500 to like even 1500, there's a real sweet spot there and your pool of buyers is just so big. Right. That makes sense to buy those because your entry level is so good. Yeah. It's like the common, the common collector guy, like the guy that just wants that whole, he's buying it to keep it and hold it. Yes. And, and, uh, and I'm well, sure you like, can like an Avengers four, I know you're more DC, but you can get like an Avengers four in three Oh four Oh in that under 2000 price range. Mm. Okay. Interesting. All right. I'm learning. <laughs> I'm learning. <laughs> That's what I've been doing the last couple of weeks, Tom. Cause like I've been looking yeah. for a, a poison Ivy, uh, poison Ivy and Batgirl. That's my next two books. But I just sent, uh, 21 books over to CGC like a oh, month no. ago. And then I send another 13 today. So I mean, oh when, I God, come, when I come, I'm going in, bro. I need to get these books. Well, and <laughs> you can see like how much books are changing and what's now a book that holds value yeah. versus two months ago, you could pick up for 10 bucks. Which yeah. is insane. Like even like um, we spoke yeah. before the call, uh, I got a Star Wars one. Star Wars one when when it was brought up to me. Well, I was looking it up this morning. That book popped off. Yeah, it was like I think November. It was like at two hundred bucks. Yeah. And then like a week ago, it was like at five fifty for a high grade. Oh, and it's yep. like, yo, that's you talk about a four month turnaround. Like yep. the book doubled then some. Right. Like it's it's insane. Right. And and similar to what you're saying earlier, it's um I think it's because you know people are not going out to eat. People have extra money and people like. People are doing Gary V shit and going and flipping their cards and like, oh crap, now I could buy this. Like yeah. I'm looking There's to sell all my Jordans. New, it's like a lot of found money. Yeah. Everyone, we've been sitting at home for so yeah. long and it's like, we have all this time to actually learn something and see what yeah. else we could do and how to get extra money. And that's, and that's, that's what I've been doing and that's yeah. what I'm planning on doing. And say you have your Pokemon cards, right? From when you were a kid, <laughs> parents didn't throw them away. You went through them, you have a Charizard. That's that like 10 G's if you're lucky. Into. And Dude. right, it, and maybe it's 10, maybe it's five, maybe it's 2,500, or maybe yeah. it's more. But you know what? Like, that's money that you yeah. just came yeah. up on. Like, that was a come up. So yeah. now you can take that money and you can put it into something. There is, there's a lot of found money that people are just coming up on. I mean, sports cards are crazy. Yeah. So they're taking this money and they're coming into other hobbies because they have extra money. Part of me was like, um, I still have, I don't know. I've been collecting basketball cards since the early, early 90s. Go and, through that. And no, no, no. I, no, because I was, I was very organized as a six-year-old. Mm -hmm. And I have my binders by players and all the crap and the rookie cards and all this nonsense. But I have about like 700 Jordan basketball cards. And I was like, so I'd just be like, hey, can someone just give me $200,000 for my whole collection and you do all the fucking work? <laughs> like, I don't want to do all the work. But I'm like, what if all this is like $1.5 million and I'm over here right. like giving someone a discount? So right. I'm like, you know what? Now, since I know more about comics now, what I'm going to do when my comics come back and I sell those yeah. is invest all of my cards because I know cards back in the 90s. Back right. in, um, you know, I got Jordan. I got 86 Jordans, 89. I got rookie Kobe's LeBron's like you all these players Kobe, send them in and grade them don't no, even I, that's, that's what I'm that's what that's but the I wouldn't plan. even wait I would just send them well the rookie Kobe's I gotta find them in my parents house the Jordan box always stayed close to me because the Jordan box it's Michael Jordan you that's know your baby. It's, right yeah and I and like growing up I found like Sports Illustrated magazines um yeah. with Jordan on the cover shit I went to my parents house and I found the junior year uh Sports Illustrated cover of LeBron James, his junior year of high school on a, on a Sports Illustrated cover. And I found that and I was like, oh shit. My mom's like, should I throw all those covers out? Oh, nah, man. mom, you throw none of my stuff out. Remember that. And I'm uh, still looking for my Pokemon cards. Like, I don't know where my Pokemon cards are. So <laughs> when I go back for Good Easter, point. I'm like, I'm like, I, I had a stash on top of my closet. Thank God no one knows where I live because people were just right. busting my door. And like, I've been, like normally when I was younger, I used to jump on my bed and stash everything up there. Oh my god! And like, there's no bed there, and I'm not that tall. I'm tall, yeah. but not that tall. Like Bring I need to get on something. With you. <laughs> so yeah, so when I go over for Good Friday, I told my mom, I was like, "Mom, yeah. like, I'm bringing the step ladder with me. Right. I got to like, you know, my my hologram Charles Jordan Pikachu are still there. I'm good. 
<laughs> nice. But that's the awesome stuff about collecting. And then, you know, um, right. And the, and the way in collecting, we just relive our childhood and, right. and part of it's the fun of it. And now, right. now that we're adults, it's like, it's good. It's even better when you're making money. Right. <laughs> right. That's what you live for. Yeah. You make the money and for you sure. enjoy your childhood. Um, but before we close out, uh, nerdy girl, don't leave. We're going we're gonna to go through the end of it and then stay on. Um, okay. Any 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 advice? I know the whole episode's full of advice and things for people <laughs> to do, uh, but like anything that you want, like any, you know, you're a woman, and it was hard for you to go through all this in the beginning, and you you stuck through it, and look where you're at today. Uh, yeah. Any advice for that person, or even a guy, or anyone? Any advice for anyone that yeah. wants to jump into what you're doing? And any words of encouragement? If you're a female, be fierce and be fearless and be a badass. You cannot just wait for them to offer you a seat at the table. You need to take your seat. Literally, you need to take your seat. And if you're coming in and you want to do this as a business, then you need to do your homework. You need to invest in subscription services. I use GP analysis personally. Um, to watch market trends and get sales data, know your profit margins and never, never, never put yourself into debt to do this. Buy within your means and work your way up. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the replay this over and over again. I listen to it in the morning. <laughs> I heard and someone I once say like max out your credit cards and mortgage your house to like buy collectibles and it was oh, the no. first advice i'd ever heard yeah. and so now i always try to make it a point like you should never ever ever put yourself in a risky situation on a gamble because what if the book you're going all in on ends up being restored or incomplete and that person's not willing to take a refund and now you've lost money so always be willing to spend what you can afford to lose where like maybe it works out and it's great and you want yourself a new business but if it doesn't work out you're no worse off than you were mm. that's awesome advice. advice do you hear that tom I, you know, I do hear that yes I, 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 i'm going to the gears Sell those gonna take, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm, I'm not i'm not going to put out another um take out another mortgage so i won't be doing that so well, please don't uh. <laughs> um let uh let everyone know where we can find you um, I'm Nerdy Girl Comics on Instagram. I'm Nerdy Girl Comics on Facebook. I have a YouTube channel, Nerdy Girl Comics, but I'm not super active on there. Everyone keeps telling me I need to be, so I promise I will get consistent. And, and no TikTok? Come on. I have a Nerdy Girl Comics TikTok, but there's like three videos, and I'm so bad at TikTok. So <laughs> <laughs> well, follow her on TikTok too. Um, thank you for coming on the show. It was great thank chatting you with you, me. getting to know you. Um, we're definitely going to discuss a lot of things because yeah. I, I need your help. Um, you. uh, Tom, any last words? No, there was, this was awesome. It was one of the coolest episodes we've done, i got to say. Oh, thank you. I yeah. appreciate that. Um, uh, for everyone listening and watching, I really hope you took a lot from this episode. Just understand that uh, you could be an entrepreneur. Uh, do it smart. Do it right. Um, network. Reach out to people. Um, listen to this podcast, get some advice. Uh, <laughs> besides that, um, thank you very much for listening. Please like, leave a comment, subscribe, follow us on our on our handles. Um, besides that, uh, thank you very much, Nerdy Girl, one last time. Ladies and gentlemen, episode five, it's a wrap. <laughs>